First of all, I give all glory and honor to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem or Kakatash. Double honor said, teachers tell us in the boss of great millstone, likewise, brothers out there putting out this truth. Faithfully, fearlessly feeding the sheep, and to you, brothers and sisters tuning in, Shalom. Today's lesson title The Situation. Let's take a look at that word situation. A set of circumstances in which one finds oneself a state of affair. Now, when we take a look at the situation here in Great Babylon, America, okay. The one third, hopefully, lack of Yasharala eyes are open to our situation, which is we are under constant oppression. The Lord Yahweh is going to send the Malak, our king, the Hamashiach, to take us out of this place before he destroys it. So we don't have that hope in Great Babylon, America, because we've been taken out of this place. But the two thirds of our people, along with these other people, they have their hopes. Here in Great Babylon, America, because their eyes have been dark. And let's start off with our first scripture. This is the book of Isaiah 30 and Sarah verse 1. It says, Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord Yahweh Shemashai, that take counsel, but not of me, which is they're taking counsel of who? The kings of Great Babylon, America. And that cover where they covered, but are not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, which is places known as spiritual Sodom and Egypt. And have not asked in my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Now, the confusion that's taking place right now is because Jake them, you know, they don't understand why they're suddenly now thrust into, you know, uh, joblessness, unemployment, you know, problems, crisis, you know, um, all kinds of mental plagues now coming at them because suddenly you know what was promised to them you know which is what i'm going to take care of you is not happening or manifesting in the way that they would like it's much like this dog you see in this video here okay confused because here's the owner okay which is the master holding up an object okay like is like this dog is, thinks it's going to get it and it keeps jumping up trying to get it you know doing anything to please this master to get whatever it is that is going to make it feel good but it's not getting it so the master continues to walk and guess what the dog is following this master much like our people our people will continue to give their self to the kings okay and the rulers of great babylon america in order to receive what they thought was going to sustain them and they're not looking towards Yahweh Bashim Shai as a means of salvation. Let's go into the book of Ecclesiastes 11 and 14 because what they don't understand is this. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai gives and he takes and it reads prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Okay, let me read that again prosperity and adversity life and death poverty and riches come of the lord so if esau the edomite the so-called white man is giving you assistance such as food okay water you know um maybe paying a percentage of your electric bill or your house bill okay subsidizing basically your lifestyle that is of the lord okay the same thing when esau brings debt to yasharala that is of the lord Okay, and the same thing when uh, Esau uh, gives riches to certain members of the uh, of uh, Yasharala. Okay, we can name you know those celebrities, those ball players, whatever the case is. That comes from the Lord. That is your um, basically your 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 um, your gift in this life because in the kingdom you're gonna have less of those gifts. Okay, those who side in here with Egypt and who run down to Egypt. Okay, so it all comes from the Lord. Let's go into the book of Jeremiah 10 and Psalm verse 1. Because there's a snare and a catch that has been set up in this place. And this is the reason why you're seeing a situation right now where a lot of Jakes, you know, are being cast out on the streets. Okay, uh, finding themselves suddenly, you know, under a bridge. Okay, or in a community with these drug addicts. Okay, or about they got that notice that is that is putting them uh, on notice that you're about to lose what little you have is because of the snare. Let's go in the book of Jeremiah 10 
And so I was wondering, it says, Hear ye the word of the Lord, Yahweh Shemash, I speak it unto you. O house of Israel, thus said the Lord, Learn not the ways of the heathen, and be not dismay at the signs of heaven, for the heathens are dismay at them. Now listen to this, because this is critical. We are going in a time of what? A lot of uh, social events that take place because you have a lot of these holidays. The next one being Memorial Weekend. It says, For the customs of the people are vain. One cut a tree out of the forest. The works of the hands of the worksmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fashion it with nails and with hammers that it not move. Now, this has caused a lot of jakes to be broke. Everything is a special event here. You're talking about the games. You're talking about the holidays. You know, Christmas especially. Okay? And I can just tell you from experience, um, living in a household where money was spent for that Christmas day that should not have been spent and there was a price to pay for it in the following months as and couldn't be met, okay? Or bills couldn't be paid, okay? Of course, this is a long time ago, um, but that's the situation right there because our people have been grafted into, okay, the ways of the heathen or the ways of our oppressor who basically sets uh the standard of life here on this earth but in particular here in great babylon america in which you feel that you need to go and do that what they do because well that sense of entitlement okay when we look at the word entitlement it means the fact of having a right to something okay the belief that one is inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment and believe it or not no matter how how much a so-called white man come up against yasharala so-called black americans and latino you still have Jake walking around with that proud spirit as if really they're inherently supposed to get what they see, okay, the so-called white people are having. And that's why you see Jake them go through any means, okay, to live or be like their oppressor. Now, I'm going to show you this short video here um, in regards to, you know, that trust in Egypt. Suddenly now a reality check is coming and you're going to hear the words from um, the participants uh, or the uh, uh, impacted uh, individuals in this video. Internet access is crucial for school, work, or simply staying in touch. But a program that helps keep millions of Americans online is about to end. Yeah, Boston 25 News reporter Kirsten Garris explains the holdup that could leave them disconnected. Without internet, I would have to go to the library. Like so many of us, Adrian McClintock and her fiance rely on the internet for just about everything. I've applied for food stamps, I've applied for disability. She can apply for jobs, she can get the phone call about jobs. But later this month, their service will be cut off unless Congress acts, because the federal program that helps them cover their bill is running out of money. The program is going to lose its ability to fully support everyone who's enrolled at the end of this month, the end of April. Now the White House and Congress are trying to secure funding to keep the Affordable Connectivity Program going. Since it launched in 2021, it's helped 23 million families, about one in every six households stay connected. The ACP gives participants $30 a month off their bill, and in turn, many internet providers set their prices to make internet free for those who need it most. Nearly half of those households are military families. About a quarter of them are seniors. The Biden administration has asked Congress to approve $6 billion in funding to keep the internet on for families through the end of the year. Quest but despite bipartisan support in the House and Senate, it hasn't been scheduled for a full vote in either chamber. Critics say that's because of the gridlock for funding bills in Congress, a delay that's setting up of Americans like McClintock to be disconnected in a matter of weeks. Having to go back to the same behaviors we had when we were homeless, that's a really hard hit emotionally. So as you saw in that video, okay, you would, what did that individual, first thing came into her mouth was really about welfare, okay? Again, trusting in Egypt, okay? She also talked about, you know, jobs and all the other different things and this, this communication that now suddenly is going to be cut off. And you can see the numbers were significant, okay? Which, you know, when you think about it, you know, could this be part of that start of the farming of the word, okay? Because really most people sit in front of the, the computer, or on their phone looking at the internet or browsing at the internet to get their information and with that cut off or the subsidy uh the subsidization of it is reduced or or not even given at all it's going to cause a lot of people to not even 
have the ability to communicate okay or gain any type of knowledge you know or this warning that that the prophets out here on the highway and byway uh, are, are prophesizing okay to especially to our people and you can see uh, most likely that obese woman was a jake okay but i'm going to say this these people can actually work these people could have always worked see a lot of people are very um lazy in great babylon in america they they prefer again that the entitlement i'm only going to work the minimum hours that i have to if i do work okay and hopefully somebody will just hand me okay or fill in the gap of my laziness because i want to have a lot of time to go live the life here in great babylon america and this is going to be a, a price that these people are going to going to be paying because reality check is now coming to fruition let's go into the book of first peter first peter chapter 2 start verse 9 because see we remember our old ways okay this is the reason why you see we have that wisdom that's in, in that's been it planted in us by Yahweh by Shimei Shai. said, ye I chosen, okay, this is First Peter, First Peter chapter 2, sound verse 9 reads, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. And we're in that marvelous light right now. We're out of darkness. So we've changed the ways of you know our old ways you know where we followed the heathens where we followed especially Esau the Edomite the so-called white man because they're the dominant you know force on this earth and whatever they do everybody else follows because they set the standard which in time past were not a people but are now the people of power which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy which is getting us out of that darkness I mean Many of the brothers go into it, you know, when you sit down and I do it often, you, you sit down and think of how grossly dark darkness we were in. Like, you can't believe the Lord actually pulled you out of that. And, 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 that, and that makes it very, very clear that we cannot save ourselves. It, it's, you, you can't. I don't care how smart you are, how many degrees you have, how much of a go-getter you are. If you are lost in the world, man, you are, you're done, okay? Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. And this is a constant battle that we fight because it ain't like we remember, we forgot our past, you know. It's all still there. The people that we used to hang with, they're still there. The people that we used to associate with, they're still there. Okay? Everything is still there. Everything is still intact. So guess what? All those things are out there is, 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 is what create that lust. And this is why we have to abstain from that. And part of that light is that we know that that's darkness. And where we are is light. Let's go into Psalm 62. And then it says, trust not in oppression and become not vain and robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Why do you think we're not setting our heart upon them? Because we understand. Okay. And we understand the snare that the, the so-called white man set up, which Yahweh Shemar has given him that authority to do that. We understand that the Lord gives and he takes. So that's why we don't set our heart upon them. You don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you know, come into the ministry, do the work. And then all of a sudden, you know, things are going great for you. And then you go jump back out there and then think, oh, well, I know, the, I know I have the knowledge. So I'm going to come back, you know, you know, no, it doesn't work that way. See the Lord give and he can take away. And these people, they don't want to turn to the Lord. How about you? They prefer that Esau the so-called white man because he's in physical form you know he, he wears his nice tie you know and stand up and smile on the tv screen and say i can do this for you but what they're seeing is he doesn't really have the power to do anything for you that the lord Yahweh hasn't sanctioned him to do let's close over with the book of ecclesiastes because we understand us understanding the situation understand that we are not going to be covetous of anything in this world whatever you have you know that at some point in time it is going to be destroyed in that lake of fire but when that happens lord willing we are on the chariot in our new form okay and meet now malak so it doesn't matter okay ecclesiastes 7 and sound verse 2 it reads it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for this is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart so see we these scriptures 
when you read up when you when you when you read it you bring up the lessons you go down in the byway everything we show shows about what destruction there's only going to be debt destruction famine pestilence all those things okay so this is all this is constantly in our mind that the lord is going to destroy this place that's mourning we are no this is you're not in the same spirit you was like say five or ten years ago where you was looking for retirement or you were looking to you know uh go take this vacation and you was thinking 20 years down the line and okay when i get 70 years old i'll be driving my rv down to this place and that place and that place and all that stuff you're not thinking nowhere near that your heart your mind and spirit is constantly in the fact that any day now the lord could send a nuke in this place or or cut the electricity off or or do some horror kill thousands you know i mean a whole lot of things that's where we are sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the continents the heart is made better so because of that that keeps us in check we are mentally prepared okay it keeps us real and it keeps us in the fear of the lord yahweh Hashem Shai. it says the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools in the house of mirth and these people are about to get a reality check okay because they're thrusting into the into the spirit of egypt which is nothing but debt the so-called white man is nothing but dead. I put up a video yesterday about Trump. When he gets back, this man is death. Okay? So for you niggas for Trump, oh boy, y'all got something coming for you, okay? So Lord willing, Lord, like was at a fire, like to close it by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shai, by Shem, or Kakadash. Double honor to teach us, elders, and apostles, great most so likewise, brothers, so therefore know the truth. Faithfully, fearlessly, feeding the sheep, and to you, brothers and sisters, doing it in Shalom.